Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Corrados. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Waterfall Stitch program. We have a total of four videos and they'll all be linked in the same link in the video description. They'll all go to the same thing because we have one download that will cover everything. Now what I'm going to do, the video title promised a certain type of stitch for it. So I'm gonna demonstrate that immediately. I'm gonna show you an alter slow-mo and then you can use the video chapters to jump ahead or back and at the end of this tutorial I'm going to be telling you more about this uh, stitch, why you would care about it. But for now let me just get right into a stitch demonstration with you. So this is the half double crochet waterfall. Waterfall 2, 3, 4 and 5. Waterfall 1 does not exist. So what we have here is that there are spaces in the work that already exist and what we're doing is that we're coming across and we're falling into the stitches to create the waterfall going down. The more that you go down the more complicated it gets but I'm sure that you can do it once you understand that this stitch works. So we're gonna start with our easiest one of going waterfall two and I'm going to show you each stitch in real time and then I'm gonna just frog and then walk you through three stitches in a slower format. Let's begin uh, wash, uh, sorry, waterfall number two in half double crochet. I'm going to begin waterfall number two in half double crochet in real time. And there you go. So let's just do this again. So half double crochet ends us with a half double crochet to match the half double crochet that's already there and we also have the stitch work that is going down below. So each one of these rows below is a half double crochet. Let's begin to do this in slow-mo format. Let's begin to do slow-mo format. The more that we go down the harder that the stitch gets. So if you're seeing that that's not uh, you, it's the stitch. So you're going to, before you begin, and before you go into this space you need to wrap the hook once. So wrap the hook once and then dive right into the space right to the back side. And when you're back there you need to wrap the hook twice. So once and twice. Turn the project over because the stitch work is right there that we want to go into and we want to go into the stitch that exists and push that hook. Don't be afraid to do that and make sure that the stitch work stays lined up on the back. You don't want when you twist, you don't want them to be out of order so you want everything to always stay organized on the hook. Yarn over, pull through and like half double crochet you're going to pull through one, two, three loops of the color and one of the bar. So yarning over, pulling it through those three loops of the same color which is the gray and the bar at the same time. And push that and turn it to the good side. And then finally yarn over, pull through the final three and that's your final half double crochet that will sit on top that will match the other half double crochet that are already there. Let's begin again. So let's start. So to start first you're going to yarn over before going into the space and you insert into the space and once you get there you yarn over twice. So once and twice. Then you're going to just turn the project over and go into the assigned stitch that you're looking for. And going in and pull it and push that hook. Make sure everything stays nice and flat on your hook. The more it bunches up the harder this, this is. You're going to yarn over, pull through that stitch And now with half double crochet you're always going to pull over. So just use your fingers if you don't think it makes sense but you're gonna pull through the, the three loops plus the bar. So yarning over, pull through those three loops. 
The third loop is always a pain. So just if you think that's a struggle, it is a struggle. So pull through all three loops plus the bar. Turn it to the good side of the work and yarn over, pull through the final three. To do the last half double crochet here, you're going to go in but before you go in, make sure you wrap. You need that extra loop there to finish this off properly. Once you get there, wrap twice. Turn the project over and going into the assigned stitch that you're looking for. And don't be afraid to push that hook in. It's easier if this is not a grip handle because you need more shaft to work with. Yarn over, pull through. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through these three loops of the same color and the bar at the same time. Half double crochet can be kind of complex. Once you've done that, turn it over to the right side of the work and pull through the final three. And that is your half double crochet in the waterfall. So what I want to do now is that I'm going to go on to waterfall number three and demonstrate that and the only difference is that we're going down even further. So things get a little more complicated from this point going forward. So it's always waterfall three, four and five that or even bigger. You can go even uh, deeper if you want to but I'm just gonna demonstrate up to number five today. Let's begin waterfall three. So let's demonstrate waterfall three in real time and then I will walk my way through three of those stitches with you. So we're gonna go in. And that's waterfall number three. So the difference before is that it's deeper. So let's frog this out and let's do three stitches with you to see if you get it. So waterfall three, here we go. Before we go into the space, it's like it was before, we wrap the hook and insert into the space. And when we get to the other side, we wrap twice. But you're not done. You need to move this hook now to the front side of the work. So come back through the space, use your fingernail and push it up the hook. Make sure that when you're looking at these is that the wrapping of the hook is in order. Do not have it just scrambled on there because it matters because you, you won't get your hook out later. So once you have that one done, you're gonna come to the next space and you're gonna go back to the outside and you're gonna wrap twice. Now turn the whole project over and going into the stitch that you're looking for. Make sure everything stays flat on your hook and push. You're going to yarn over, pull through the stitch itself and now everything like half double crochet is always in the three loops. So you're gonna pull through the three loops plus the bar. The more relaxed you are, the easier the stitch. In half double crochet, it's, I find it it's the hardest. Once it's through there, you're gonna pull through the next three loops and the next bar. Finally, you'll turn the project back to the right side of the work and pull through the final three loops. Let's try again. So in this space you go, but before you go there, you wrap the hook first and go to the back side and wrap twice. It's awkward so if you're struggling it's okay. Just the video will be around forever. So you're gonna go in and once you grab that pull to the right side of the work and use your fingernail and push down that hook. The fingernail is just pushing those stitches up on there beyond the throat of the crochet hook. You're gonna come into the next space and you're going to wrap twice and turn the entire project over and going into the stitch that you're looking for. Once you get it, push your hook. Don't be afraid to push that hook. 
Make sure everything's nice and flat on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the stitch. Then just make sure everything stays organized. Pull through the three loops of the same color and the bar. Next pull through the three loops of the same color and the bar. Pull through the final, just turn it to the good side and pull through the final three loops. So these chain spaces I'm calling as the bar. Okay. These here in the middle once it starts going further down they just float. So they can be moved. The only one that's secured is the very bottom one. Everything else is floating. Let's begin your last one. So going in, go to the back side and wrap twice. Then you're going to pull that forward through that space. Use your fingernail just to hold those loops and push. Going into the next space, wrap twice and turn the entire project over and going into the assigned stitch. Make sure it's flat. Yarn over, pull through the stitch. Yarn over, pull through the three loops plus the bar. Yarn over, pull through the next three loops of the same color and the bar. Turn to the good side of the work and pull through the final three. And that would be your waterfall number three. So it's a little bit deeper. Let's begin waterfall number four. The deeper you go the more complex this gets. So just bear with me. So make sure that you don't give up on yourself. You can do this. I'm gonna show you in real time once. And then we will talk our way through three stitches. And that's it. So like the other stitches once it gets deeper you can see it's really wandering because the only one that's secured is actually this stitch here. Everything else is just floating. So you can always just shift it out of the way and make room for the other stitches that will come in. So let's frog this out. I mean to rip it rip it and let's begin three stitches of waterfall four in half double crochet. Let's begin slowly of waterfall number four. To go in it's like the other ones that we wrap the hook first before we go into the first space. So going in and go to the back. Push. On the back side you're going to wrap the hook twice. Once you have that done you're going to pull that to the good side of the work. Use your fingernail to help push those loops up and push that hook down. So you need more shaft space the deeper you go. So let's go into the next space here. Going in and wrap that hook twice. And once you have that picked up pull back to the good side of the work through the same space. Use your fingernail and push up. We're gonna come into our next space and this will be the last space. So you're gonna go in and yarn over twice. But this time turn the entire project over and going into the assigned stitch that you're looking for. 
and you're just gonna go into that assigned stitch and make sure everything stays flat on your hook. This is why you need more shaft work. See so if you use these comfort grips you don't have that space to work with. Now that we have that done we're gonna yarn over and pull through that stitch. In half double crochet we usually pull through three loops at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do the three loops plus this, the chain space here. I call that the bar. So we're gonna pull through the three loops of the same color. That third loop is always a pain. And then pull through and pull through beyond the bar. Push the hook up. Don't be afraid to do that. Yarn over, pull through the next three loops and the bar. And you're doing this all the way back to the top if you haven't already figured that out. Pull through, yarn over, pull through the next three loops and the bar. Once you're at the top here, turn it to the right side of the work, the good side, and then pull, yarn over, pull through the final three. So you can see that it's just floating there. So just don't be afraid. You can use your fingers and just shift it. The only one you can't shift is the bottom one because that's actually in a stitch. So let's begin another one. So to start another one, you yarn over and going into this space first. And then yarning over twice. And pull back through that space. Use your fingernail and push. Make sure that the strands on the hook never cross over each other. They have to be wrapped in sequence. So now coming to the next space wrap twice and after you have that done bring it back to the good side. So through that space again and use your fingernail just to hold that loop and push. I find it helps uh, keep these strands in order. Finally we have the last one. We're going to wrap the hook twice and because it is the last space I'm going to then just immediately go to my assigned stitch and I'm gonna insert into the stitch and push. Keep everything nice and flat on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the two, or sorry, pull through the stitch. And in half double crochet it's always pulling through three loops. So we're gonna do the three loops plus the bar. Unfortunately if you drop a loop I always find I have to restart in that particular stitch. So we do this one. So we yarn over, pull through the next three loops and the bar. So you're beneficial to take your time because if you rush you'll probably drop something. So yarn over, pull through three loops and the bar. And this will take you back to the top and then the final yarn over, pull through the two, or sorry, pull through the three final loops. And again you can see this is floating. I wouldn't worry about that too much until everything's done. You'll find that it will settle out anyway. So let's do your final one. So wrap the hook first and going into the first space and wrap twice. Pull back to the good side. Use your fingernail just to hold it and push that hook down. Come to the next space. Go to the back and push. Next space is your last space. So you're just gonna go in and you're gonna wrap twice and stay to the back side and look for your immediate stitch that you wanna go into. Keep things nice and flat on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the stitch and now it's half double crochet so you're gonna yarn over and pull through the three loops plus the bar. Push that hook. Yarn over, pull through the next three loops of the same color plus the bar. Yarn over, pull through the next three loops of the same color plus the bar. This takes you right back to the top and then yarn over, pull through the three. Okay, and so that was it. So everything is just floating and you'll notice that when you put your other crochets in, in position it will 
evenly space everything. So now we're going to progress to waterfall number five. So because this is a half double crochet top, the remaining of the stitches, whatever you're doing, will be a half double crochet in order to get yourself there. And that's where we're gonna pick you up in just a moment with doing waterfall number five. So this is waterfall number five. We're now gonna go down through all those spaces. It'll be the deepest one that we're gonna do in this series. And you can go even further but it gets a lot more complicated with this if you do that. So it's up to you what you'd like to do. So I'm going to show you in real time and then I will demonstrate it through a walkthrough with all three stitches. Okay, so it gets a little more complicated the deeper you go. You can see I kind of dropped something as I was going. But that, that does happen and sometimes you can save it and other times you have to restart. So that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna start ourselves again. So let's start waterfall number five and walk my way through it verbally with you. Let's begin. Let's begin waterfall number five. To start waterfall number five in half double crochet, you are going to wrap the hook before you go in, into the space. So you're gonna yarn over and go into the space towards the back. And once you're back there, you wanna yarn over a total of twice. Once you're back there then, you're going to move the hook to the forward. You should see two loops are on your hook that were just added and use your fingernail and push this down. Then you're gonna to come to the next space wrap twice and bring it back through the same space and use your fingernail and push down on the there. So you need all this shaft space to play with. Come into the next space and do the same thing. So in, wrap twice and bring it to the good side through the hole. Move it down. Finally you have your last one you're gonna go in, you're gonna wrap twice and you're gonna stay towards the back side and going into the assigned stitch that you're looking for. Keep everything nice and even on your hook. It's easier. Now we're gonna work our way back to the top. You're gonna yarn over and pull through the stitch. Now in half double crochet we use a yarn over and pull through three loops. We'll be doing that plus a bar. This chain space is I'm calling as a bar. So you're just gonna yarn over, pull through the three loops of the same color. So one, two and three and include the bar as you pass by it. Push the hook, don't be afraid. And now you're gonna go through the next three loops here and the bar. and then push your loop, uh, hook. You're gonna do it again, yarn over, pull through the next three loops and the bar. You're just doing this all the way back to the top. It's the same thing as the other stitches, it's just taller. Yarn over, pull through three loops and the bar. And then turn it to the good side of the work and pull through all three loops. And now because this is a taller stitch you're gonna see it's more wandering in that space. Don't worry about it. Everything is slidable. The only one that's not is the base one that you went into. Including the one on top is also slidable. So it'll work itself out when you crochet more on top of your project. Let's do it again. So going into the, uh, wrapping first 
and going into the space. Yarn over twice and then bring that through that loop space and push. Use your fingernail to hold. Come to the next space. Do the same thing towards the back. Wrap twice and pull through that next space on the front side and use your fingernail to push. Next space down. Wrap twice and bring up to the front. Use your fingernail to hold. Keeps it nice and organized and you have one more space to work with but this time it's the last space. You wrap twice and keep the project turned over and going into the assigned stitch that you're looking for and push in. Keep everything nice and flat on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the stitch. Half double crochet, you're always pulling through three loops. So include the three loops and a bar. So pull through and through. Yarn over, pull through the next three loops and a bar. Yarn over, the next three loops and a bar. Yarn over, next three loops and a bar. And then you turn it to the good side of the work once you're up and pull through, yarn over, pull through the final three. And we're gonna do it one more time. Okay, so let's go. So we're gonna wrap the hook going into the space. Wrap the loop twice or wrap the yarn twice. And bring that back through the space on the front of the work and push down. Come to the next space. Wrap twice and back to the good side and push down. See the next space. Push down. You just keep on going down until you run out of spaces. This is your last space. So yarning over twice and keep the work turned over on the back side and going into the assigned stitch. And make sure everything's flat on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the stitch and then keep on going back to the top. So in half double crochet it's three loops. So include the three loops of the same color that we're working with plus the bar which is the chain space. Okay, do the next one. Three loops plus the bar. Again, yarn over three loops plus the bar. So I have two loops there that I have come through. So I have not through one of them. I'm dragging an extra one. So just be very careful as you release one of them so that it has it, it's the right one. Yarn over, pull through three loops and the bar and then yarning over pulling it through the final three. Now look at it because I dropped a stitch does it look the same and it doesn't. So it's better to keep this in a tutorial than it is to fake it. So you can see that when I drop the loop it makes a difference in the visual. So I'd want to restart that one all over again to make, make it look proper. So you just wanna keep, just keep uh, being consistent about your stitch work. And once you get used to this you can really move on these things. And so my goal is to keep every one of the stitch works um, looking very consistent. And if I rush it then I will drop stitches. But if I'm confident I can probably move at a pretty good uh, a pace in order to do it. See and I think I just did the same thing. So I'm just gonna stretch things back out 
Make sure everything's flat on the hook. And then pull through the top. And then just take a look and see if it looks the same. And it's pretty close. So because it's a half double crochet, I'm done and I just wanna continue to half double crochet along the top. And that was waterfall number five. And that would be how you do it. So what I'm gonna do, the remaining of this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through more information including a downloadable worksheet that you can use. And it has a stitch diagram and you can follow exactly to make the graphing that, or make the, the grids that I just showed you. And it's actually pretty neat and I think it's gonna be awesome. So I will see you there in just a second and I'll be right back. So welcome to the second part of this tutorial and all of the second part for this series is gonna be the same. So once you watch it once on the one video it's the same. So what we have here is a worksheet. There's a total of six pages in order to do it. It explains what this is of the waterfall. Basically you're working with the same stitch work and then you're just falling down into the spaces that exist. You're using the framework of this in order to hold it back. Just because I have three stitches coming down doesn't mean it's always three. It could just be one. It could be a multiple and it could also be a stepping and it could also be diagonals. So what I've done is that I've just created some notes here for you. The, the trick that you need to know with this most of all is that using a, a hook without a, a comfort grip is a lot easier. You need a great swath of the shaft in order to play with this kind of stitch. So just keep that in mind. So as we're just flipping our way through, we have some strategy for you. So let me just zoom you in and we'll talk quickly about that. This is just a little stitch diagram that I made and most of them going beyond this are just the same diagram but they're just changed in the stitches just to show that you can practice exactly what I just showed you. So what we have here is that you can see that we have waterfall two. It falls down. You can see one, two. This one here is waterfall three. It's one, two, three goes down. And so the one is the stitch that you're creating. Two is the next one down. That's how it's working. So you're going to notice is that it just doesn't always go down straight. It can go down on an angle if it's leaving holes a, in a different angle. So it can go down in this angle. It could be in a different angle. And you can also combine these stitches so that you can increase the stitches as your, or increase the spaces so that there's more stitches. So you could actually have a waterfall two, waterfall three, and a waterfall four to create a diagonal shape here to, for geometrics. So you can do anything like that. And so you can just continually go down. So this is a really neat idea. So just because we've just been going straight down doesn't mean that we have to and it can be a combination of many things. So let's keep flipping in the paper. So as explained we have the universal symbol. The universal symbol may not have the symbol of a single crochet at the top. It may also just this here could be a double crochet. So you have to refer to the instructions that a designer is providing to you because they may have something different. So it's a kind of a universal symbol. So you'll see this. So this here is showing that it's a double crochet here. So it's a double crochet waterfall here but it's a single crochet here at the top. So this is a, a waterfall that's falling down as a double crochet but ends with a single crochet. So that's something that you have to just keep in mind. So just watch your symbols and that's uh, moving on. So let's keep flipping along and let's go to the next example. So here's an example of the single crochet that we did in this series. This here is chaining of 28 and then single crochet, uh, second chain from the hook and then we're creating these spaces as we go along. So you can follow the chart in order to make that so you can test this. And if you're following it right, row number six is how we started and we started with the waterfall number two, then we went three, four, and five. So it just shows you this here is the stitch key to tell you what it is. So we have number two, three, four and five and remember that number one of any one of these is the stitch that you're putting in. So that's one and two. So this makes it waterfall two and etc. and you can work your way through that. Let's keep flipping. This here is waterfalls with half double crochet. So the very top stitch is going to be a half double crochet. So our execution to start the stitch is different than from a single crochet. So that's something that you have to keep in mind but we are just filling it in with this half double crochets. So we have waterfall two, three, four, and five. Just how I explained it before. So one, two, three, four and or sorry two, three, four, five is right here. So you can follow this again. This is again chain 28, second chain from the hook starts your single crochet. You can make the framework in order to have this. So let's keep flipping in this page. 
This here was also the same diagram but done as a double crochet instead. So the very top of this is a double crochet. You can see that is here as well. So you got two, three, four, and five. And so it's just coming straight on down. This is chain 28 to start. And basically when we go to do this is that um, your second chain from the hook is a single crochet and then you create the framework. And then the last row is the waterfall coming in. Remember that the last row that you're providing in, this is considered one and two. That's why it's dropping down to two. So it's two and then three, four, and five. So waterfall number one would not exist because you're not dropping down anything beyond that. So this is kind of neat and so this would be then the double crochet one that you would see. So in the end it's a really neat concept. I was actually really quite thrilled with this. I was like up all night because I was so excited about this particular concept. I've never seen anything like it. I think it's really neat. It provides really good geometrics as far as like coming straight down. You could do your angles and I just think it's a really nice clean finish and the back of these things even though we've been looking at the front the whole time the back of them actually looks pretty decent too. So it's something that if your blanket turned over it would be okay but the front side is obviously the ideal side. So it's a really neat idea. This is the waterfall stitch and hopefully that you enjoy and you have great value of learning something new today. Let me know in the comments how you're doing and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.